What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another live Monday night beer review here on the Beer Patrol. I'm Average Joe, baby, and it's go time. And tonight I am going to be reviewing two beers from the Dogfish Head Craft Brewery, and they are out of Milton, Delaware. And I have the 2019 version of their American Beauty. And I also have Sequench, their Sequench Ale. So I'm going to be reviewing these in a little bit. But first, I want to talk about something. And that's something I want to talk about is I want to apologize to you guys for uh, canceling last week's show and rescheduling it for this week. So last week, I was supposed to review these two beers. And I actually, if you check in the comment section of this video, I have a comment from, it's going to say probably say seven days ago or one week ago, that says that I am going to uh, cancel and reschedule because uh, something came up. Well, last Monday afternoon, I came down with a head cold couldn't smell, couldn't taste. So I'm like, what's the point of doing a live beer review? There is not, right? My senses aren't working. So I was like, I'm going to cancel it, push it back. Good thing I did because I also developed a, st a stomach bug and I was pretty much out of commission the entire week. It was not, not a great time. Let's just say that. Didn't start feeling better to Friday. So I'm glad I canceled, but I will say, I wish there was an easier way to uh, let you guys know when something like that happens. Now I could have posted like a quick uh, text video that so many people do, maybe a 10, 15 second one, but I just felt terrible. So I was like, I'm not gonna, I just, I didn't wanna do anything. I posted that that message and I posted another one in the live comment section. And the live comments one kind of, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it dis disappeared. I'm almost positive, but the other one should still be there. But when it comes to YouTube, um, they have a community tab that apparently if you have over a thousand subscribers you can use and you can post messages and that would have been ideal of course i don't have a thousand subscribers so i could not use it and another thing is lately they took away the mobile streaming from um users that uh, channels that don't have a thousand subscribers as well and that's kind of a bummer it seems like youtube's kind of pushing out the the smaller guys and you know somebody like uh paul over at pa uh, who's a good friend of mine um fellow beer tuber he uses all of his um he uses mobile streaming for everything he pretty much does this now he can't do it why just because they put an arbitrary number on it doesn't make sense. I wish the community tab, it doesn't matter how many subs you have, I wish you could just use it because in a situation like this it would help. But anyway, I'm kind of just rambling about nonsense now, so whatever. Next time I will try to update you guys a little better. I got like three or four messages late Monday, early Tuesday, like we're, we're just supposed to review the dogfish head beers. And I'm like, yeah, I posted the comment and they're like, oh, I didn't see it. And I'm like, I figured as well. But anyway, I just want to apologize because it was, it was pretty crappy, honestly. Uh, but anyway, uh, for today's review, like always, if you're watching this back on the replay, I will post timestamps in the description box so you guys can jump to the Sequench or the American Beauty review. I am going to be reviewing Sequench first, even though you will probably see in the title American Beauty is listed first. Sequench is the first beer I'm going to review. I've pulled these both out of the fridge about 15, 20 minutes ago. So I want to drink this a little bit cooler and let the American Beauty warm up a little bit. So if you have either of these beers, it's been a couple of weeks since I mentioned I was doing this review. I know Raining on Your Parade and a couple others, uh, Jesse over at Bumpy Bro Brewery, I know they picked up these beers. So if you still have one available and you want to drink along, feel free, post uh, in the comments section for those of you watching live. I'm definitely going to keep my eyes on the comments throughout the entire evening. And uh, yeah, we'll get a good back and forth going and whatnot. I also want to mention one last thing before I do jump into the reviews here. Next week, I'm doing a theme week on my channel. It's going to be a barrel-aged Michigan beers. And most of them are going to come courtesy of a friend of mine and a viewer of the channel, Jeff, a.k.a. No Jinx. He sent me a beer mail about a month ago. And most of the reviews next week are going to be from that beer mail. He sent me a bunch of uh, Griffin Claw beers and Odd Side Ale beers. And uh, I thought, though, for the live uh, reviews on Monday, I would do something that a lot of people could get or would have been able to get when they were released. So... Next Monday night, 8 p.m., I'm going to have two reviews I'm going to do from New Holland Brewing, the Dragon's Milk Reserve Banana Coconut, and I'm also going to do from Bell's Brewery, their 30th Anniversary Cherry Reserve Stout. Now, both those beers have been out for quite a while, so if you have them in your cellar or maybe they're just still on the shelves locally, pick them up and we'll drink them. should be a good time, so just wanted to point that out. I will uh, mention that again at the end of the show so you guys know, but that should be uh, those two beers. I'm going to do two separate videos next week for those. Uh, we'll check the comments real quick, see what's going on here. We have uh, 420. Christoph says, what up, Joe? You've been asking for direct messaging from a user to user on YouTube for ages, but it would open up a effing shit fest for sure. They used to have 
messaging on YouTube, believe it or not, Christoph, they totally did. And then they took it away years ago. I think you there's you have to connect with people now, I think through like the mobile app or you can do it, do it through a link, but it's a hassle just to be able to message another user. It's like, imagine if like on Facebook or something or Twitter, you couldn't direct message people or on Instagram. It's ridiculous that you have to get, you know, basically jump through hoops. It's, it's unreal. Um, Ashley says Sexton, as I was to say, Ashley says Sexton Broom. Ashley Sexton from Sexton Broom says, you ruined everyone's Monday night last week, Joe. I did, Ashley. Specifically yours, buddy. I know you were waiting. You were dying to watch me be terrible. And then Rain Air Parade says, got both beers. And yeah, I was planning on the American Beauty first. Well, that's why I'm doing. Also, keep in mind, Rain Air Parade, um, I'm doing the sour beer first. Uh, because it is colder. I, I feel like it might, ma you know what? I don't know if I should, you know, I'm going to stick with the, with the sequence. It, the American Beauty is going to be probably a little less impactful and, you know, this is going to be sour, might kind of wreck the palate, but I do have water. Hopefully you do and anyone else does and we can uh, get through this together. But uh, yeah, that's it for comments right now. Like I said, if you have either of these beers, go grab them. We're going to drink them together. So first off is sequential. So let me read what exactly this is. I'm, most of you probably are familiar with it. So they are calling sequential a session sour. They, they like to say it's a mashup of a crisp German Kolsch, a salty Goza, and a tart Berliner Weiss. Um, it comes in at 4.9% alcohol by volume, 10 IBUs, and at the time of review, my can's about three months old. Uh, they are also using in this one black limes, sour lime juice, and sea salt. So a lot of limes going on. Sea salt this is probably going to drink like a straight up goes, I'd imagine. Maybe, maybe a little bit more on the, uh, you know, the, uh, the malt, the malt base with the crisper colch and whatnot, maybe a little bit of bready biscuity vibes or something, but I don't know. I'm using the classic dogfish head. This is one of my favorite beer, um, glasses, the dogfish head. I've had this for about seven or eight years. It's just awesome glass. I don't know. I just decided to use it. So give it a quick pour here. Mm -hmm. Should be able to pour almost most of it. But yeah, uh, what else did they say on the label here? Lime juice, lime peel, black limes, and sea salt. So they don't even mention lime peel on the website. It just says, yeah, black lime, sour lime juice, sea salt. They don't even use the, come on. Dogfish head, you're killing me, bros. You're killing me. What's up, Chris? Chris from Off the 10th is here. Are you back yet, Chris? Did you already leave? I saw on Facebook you were leaving, but did you actually arrive home? Anyway, so this pours out a super cloudy, like yellow orange color. Pretty vibrant, I would say. About a two finger of a bright white head, big fluffy looking head to it. It looks, honestly, you could mistake this for some kind of New England style IPA. It has the haze to it. Tons of carbonation. This has an etching in it, the glass itself. So, you know, it's going to produce, it's going to produce all that carbonation. It's going to nose on it. Yeah, tons of lime, tons of uh, sea salt. It has a salinity, a minerality to it. Chris has returned home. So Chris was vacationing and he, he said he brought back a beer for the uh, bottle share the night before the, is it the sixth annual Albino Rhino Beer Festival at this point? Yeah, I think it's the sixth, right? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah, the sixth. I can do math. Yeah, yeah, I can see what they're saying about the cold. There's a little bit of like a graininess, a slight like biscuity, like malt character. I don't know. I think they're just, they're just, they're just talking crazy. Yeah, it's, listen, this is, like I said, out of the fridge. What time is it? 8, 10. It's been out of the fridge for about 25 minutes. Um, it's probably like in the 50 degree range. So it still should be quite refreshing. But at the same time, uh, I, the nose is kind of muted. And this is where Paul from PA Brewing's comes in and be like, yo, totally drink it at 130 degrees. And I'm like, I can't do that because I'm not you. And uh, nobody, nobody really does that other than Paul. It smells good. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers. Yeah, I could. Now, I get why they call it a session sour because this doesn't have a ton of complexity to it. It's not punching me in the face with flavor right off the first sip, but I could drink a lot of these. I'm surprised at the body. 4.9%. This is like medium, slightly touch over medium body. It's not, I thought it was going to be just super thin. Yeah, it's not really thin and watery like I thought it was going to be. It actually has a really nice, really nice, like straight up medium body to it. There's a lot of carbonation. 
Uh, you know, like I said, that has the etching in here, but this beer is just highly carbonated to begin with. But it does have a slight soft smoothness to it as well. It's effervescent, but like it's not killing my palate with the carbonation like some beers do. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to drink this all on camera. There's no doubt about it. This is this is this is good. This is um, it's nothing mind blowing, but this is exactly what they're going for. It's a session sour. There's a lot of lime character in here. There's a nice minerality uh, salinity to the taste. Pretty much on the finish, you're left with a little bit of saltiness. Um, it's quite easy to drink. It's it's slightly tart. It's not even full on tart. It's nowhere approaching sour for my palate. It's just like it has a nice kiss of tartness on the back end. So maybe what they're talking about with a Kolsch meets a Goza meets a Berliner Weiss makes sense. This kind of has the tartness of something I would expect from them, you know, a big marriage of those three styles because it isn't overly, overly tart. It's just straight on tart. It's super easy to drink though. Like it's exactly, um, it is a kettle sour. So Ashley says, ben, oh, sorry, been away from the computers is a kettle sour. Yeah, Ashley, um, this is a session sour that they have year around Dogfish Head. And considering that, considering that they're such a big company and this is available everywhere they distribute at this point, I'd imagine they have to kettle sour this. I don't think it's actually soured uh, any other way. It, it's, it's a kettle sour um, for sure. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to say about this other than it is what it is. Um, it's a session sour, 4.9%. You can't taste the alcohol. The body's a little bigger than I anticipated. You get the limes. You get the salt. Super easy to drink. T uh, kiss of tartness. Not much more to say about it. If you've never had this one before and you have been thinking about picking this one up, uh, it's like the and, – and I was just going to say that. Uh, so Rainer Preet said, my can is 212.19. So mine is 116.19. So um, yours is about a month fresher. Uh, there, Rainer Parade. He says he's had this before. No problem with it. It is good. Nice summertime brew. Can't really sum it up much better than that. This is one that, and I, I'd imagine they make it for the beach specifically, but yeah, you go on vacation and you're at the beach or you're at a resort or whatever. You just pick up a six pack of this, pick up a 12 pack of it, enjoy it over the weekend. Yeah, there's no, there, you're not going to get sloshed. You're, it's going to, you know, refresh your body and it's not going to kill your palate. The one thing I was worrying about doing this review before the American Beauty was, is this going to kill my palate because of the tartness, because of the limes and the, and the salinity from the sea salt and everything? And it hasn't like, no, it, uh, it finishes relatively clean, believe it or not, like a little lingering salinity. But outside of that, this, yeah, it's fucking what it's meant to, I don't need to drink it all. It's going to be a good time. So we have a break here pretty much because I'm going to finish this up on camera before we get into the American Beauty. But uh, there's only three people watching, which is kind of a low for me, which which is okay. It happens. Uh, but anybody, Ray or Parade or whatever, anybody drinking anything good this past week? Anything kind of sneaking up on them? I've been trying to look for uh, this past week. I tried to look for more Bambarana from uh, Oscar Blues and Cigar City. Still can't find more in my area, which is terrible. Seems like a lot of people just have it hanging out on shelves. Other thing I want to say about this is, uh, Rainer Prey, do you remember? Because I know you're pretty, you're pretty, uh, uh, you know, spot on when it comes to the price point of these beers. Do you remember what you paid for the can, or did you buy a six pack of it? Uh, Ashley Sexton says that this week he, um, his half hours on Earth delivery arrived. So half hours on Earth, they're in what Seaforth, Ontario. Ashley, they are a uh, little small brewery, but they do online delivering. And they pretty much just I think they do mostly sours, although they've released like New England style IPA and stuff before. But their sours are some of the best I've ever had in Ontario. He said, pretty stoked with their offerings. Yeah, for sure. Ashley, you better have some for the share, bra. You better have some for the share. But anyway, Ray I is not answering. So I will say this. I don't remember what I paid for this other than I know I got it in a mixed six pack at uh, Wegmans. So if you're in the Northeast, Wegmans grocery store, uh, he says single can, do not remember. I definitely paid 
like a buck 83 for this can. I want to say a six pack probably runs 10 90, 10, 10 99, probably find it on sale. It's no more than two bucks a can and a six pack probably in the 10 to $11 range. So pretty good value, I think. Yeah. So I, I can't really say anything bad about this rating. I'm going to give it a straight four out of five. I mean, it seems to be a pretty standard rating for something that kind of delivers on what it says it is and kind of what you expected about it. I will say this. I thought it was going to disappoint me. And I know we shouldn't go into reviews or drinking beers with preconceived notions. A lot of us do, especially if it's from a brewery maybe you think is underwhelming or maybe from a brewery that is one of your favorite. Expectations are always there. Um, Dogfish Head's always been like kind of in the middle for me. I've had some great offerings from them. I've had some underwhelming offerings. More often than not, they do a pretty good job. And when I saw this, the reason I haven't picked this up is just because I was like, it's another kettle sour from a bigger brewery, and I kind of know what to expect. And drinking it now, yeah, I pretty much lived up to the expectations I had. I do think maybe it's a little bit better than I anticipated. I thought it might be a little bit too uh, weak. And I will say that the one thing keeping this from being a great beer for me is that it's just not super in your face with characters. But I also have to realize they call it a session sour, so they don't want to overwhelm your palate. They want you to be able to drink a six pack of this and not not be too upset about it. Uh, Ashley says he's got multiples of each of the half hours on Earth, so yeah, there may be a bottle or two left over. <laughs> what do you mean, maybe? You know, you're going to drink them all on probably a beer analysis one on one at some point. You know that, Ashley. It's going to happen, buddy. It's going to happen. Anyway, going to finish this up and then crack open the American Beauty. Yeah, so beer is gone, and uh, that was probably the easiest 12-ounce can that I've drank in a long-ass time. Like, super easy. That was amazing. Now I see why people like it so much. Honestly, I would say that is a good beginner sour for a lot of people. I can see a lot of people drinking that that don't really care for sours and being happy with it because it just has a kiss of tartness and it doesn't have a lot of the associated characteristics like a slight funkiness or anything from any kind of sour. Really, mostly true traditional sours. Kettle sours don't really have that funkiness, but I just feel like that's a perfect entry-level sour. At least in my opinion. So anyway, the next beer we're going to go with here for reviewing is American Beauty. So like I said, this is the 2019 release. I believe they've been releasing this since uh, 2013. And what this is, is an American uh, pale ale that they brew with granola, honey, and they say American hops. It is a collaboration with the Grateful Dead, which I'm sure most people know. Uh, comes in at 6.5% alcohol by volume, 50 IBUs. And at the time of review, this is actually I'm actually disappointed I didn't do a live review of this sooner. This was bottled on 227.19. When I actually picked this up, I think this bottle was like two or three weeks old, which is super fresh for a grocery store. Uh, now it's around six weeks old, give or take a few days. So, uh, you know, six and a half weeks old, we should be fine. Um, like I said, they use granola and honey. And uh, they first released this in 2013. They used to sell this in 750s. And part of the reason I didn't buy this in 750s is because, I don't know, I don't buy a lot of beers in 750s, certainly not a granola honey pale ale. So the fact that they're, I believe this is the first year they're releasing them in 12 ounce uh, bottles, I was like, yeah, I'll grab one. We'll review it. It should be a good time. Anyway, let's crack it open and get into it. Have you had this one before, Rang Air Parade? I can't remember if you said you have had it. Now I have the I like to refer to this as the butt plug glass, right? This is the, the IPA glass, has the dogfish head logo on it. One thing about this is it sucks to clean, and it always pours a gigantic head no matter how nice I am. Uh, Nick says, holy shit, 18 minutes in and still haven't opened the beer. Well, Nick, if you would look at the title, there's two beers I'm reviewing, and the sequence is gone, and I already drank it and reviewed it. So I'm going to need you to settle down, buddy. Also, because of that, now I'm not bringing super hype beers to the bottle share purposely for you, and now Red Beard's going to be upset at you. What are you going to do? Anyway, let's give this a pour. All right, so I didn't do terrible this time. Didn't do great, but I didn't do terrible. Oh, so this one also has the uh, etching in the bottom for the carbonation, which, yeah, it's crazy. So this pours out this really nice, like, 
copper, straight up golden copper color, uh, super filtered, crazy carbonation, about a forefinger of a light tan head, very compact, very creamy looking. It actually looks very nice in the glass, I would say. Mm -hmm. Let me take a uh, another sip of water here and cleanse the palate, so to speak. Nick, don't you feel like an ass for coming in there and saying that and not knowing what you're talking about, dude? Jesus. He says two things. F your sequence, and I blame being at work until three minutes ago. Well, you can blame everyone but yourself, but let's be honest. This entire thing is on you. Anyway, let's get a nose. Oh, it smells all right. This, honestly, this smells like a classic American Pale Ale. So there's a lot of like bready caramel malt character here. Maybe a touch of that honey that's given it like a sweetness that isn't associated with any other malt that I can think of other than like honey malt, but not honey malt's not used in a lot of IPAs. As far as I can think off the top of my head, the only beer that uses honey malt that I can think of right now is Hopslam. They use honey and honey malt, I'm pretty sure, from Bell's. So yeah, there's honey in here. There's you know caramel. There's a little bit of breadiness. And then it has, they say all American hops, and I don't know what hops they're using, but if I was to guess, I would say some of the sea hops, like Cascade. And uh, Christoph says, why the F does the live chat always say zero live? I have no idea. It says six for me, six watching now, Christoph, so I have no idea. Um, I, have you tried closing maybe the tab or the window or something? He says, oh, now it changes to five. Now it changes to six. Uh, Nick says honey and honey malt sounds. Yeah. Uh, just, just honey, just honey in this one. No honey malt. I don't think. Yeah. But there's like cascade, like old school, like cascade Columbus, older school hops like that. Uh, it doesn't have a huge fruity nose to it for me. And then, uh, you were tech and weary shows up and says zero live because Joe isn't in a uniform. So shout out to Greg Bylog who no one cares about. Ah, uh, Stoneyard Vineyards here. He says, number six here. What's up, buddy? I'm sure uh, you're drinking on some good homebrew as we speak. Uh, Sexa says, uh, Centennial and Chinook. Yeah, the, the, old, the Cascades, the Centennial, the Chinook, the Columbus, you know, your old sea hops. Um, and it doesn't smell bad. It just, this smells like your, uh, you know, typical old American Pale Ale that, sure, it's going to be probably pretty solid and enjoyable and easy to drink, but... I'm not getting a ton of granola and honey character in here, so I have no idea. Uh, have you had this one before, Yuri? He says, this is a snooze of a beer, wanted more granola. Well, I mean, we'll see. Anyway, let's get into it, everybody. Cheers. Wow, that's way sweeter than I anticipated. Wow. Yeah, so that honey is definitely playing a big role with this one. Yeah, actually, a lot of honey sweetness in the uh, in the taste it really wasn't there in the nose. So first off, six and a half percent. It's like medium body. This might <laughs> this sounds stupid, and I know I am, and uh, you were, will. Uh, but see, the sequence, right? I think this had a better mouthfeel and body than this beer. This is like lower side of medium body. It's a bit thin. It is six and a half percent. It is a pal L, so I'm fine with it, but I just, I don't know. I just thought with the granola in there, be a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, the mouthfeel, it's effervescent. It, there's there's carbonation. It is softer and smoother, maybe from the granola, maybe from the honey, maybe from just how they brew it. I have no idea. Um, here's a good question from Ashley Sexton. He says, how did they use the granola? I assume the spices I associate with granola cereals would be the flavor that should come through. Um, there is a slight spiciness, and I don't know how they used the granola because I don't think they really said. They just said they brewed with granola. So I am getting a slight spiciness, but that spiciness I could associate with if they do use, say, Chinook. I get usually a spiciness from Chinook hops um, or even Centennial. It has like a floral spiciness. Could be a lot of things here, but it's not really pronounced. It's just ever so slightly there. This one is all about the malt sweetness and the honey itself. It's super easy to drink. 
but there isn't enough dryness on the back end to balance out, uh, balance out that sweetness. So it finishes way sweeter than I really anticipated this beer being, even with honey and granola in it. I still thought they would do a better job of balancing out. Six and a half weeks old. Oh my God, is that playing a role? I don't know. Maybe, probably not. I've never had this beer, so I could not say that this beer at three weeks old is such a different beast than it is at you know six and a half weeks old. Could be. Uh, you were says, meh, probably mostly oat granola itself, very different recipe to recipe. I feel like if they were just using oats, they would have said oats instead of granola. I feel like them specifically mentioning granola would mean that, you know, it's here. Uh, Christoph says he's watching in his car, his Tesla, of course, and he's laughing about it. And then he says, sounds great. Sweet and 6.5% and poundable. I need, you should get dogfish head out there. But then again, I don't know, Christoph, if they distribute to Vegas, but maybe surrounding states or something. It's not bad. It's it's actually pretty tasty. And Jesse shows up from Bumpy Road Brew and he says, sorry I'm late and my car battery died. Well, Jesse, I would say that's way more important than whatever the hell is happening in this review. So that sucks, buddy. Sorry to hear that. Um, but, uh, yeah, you, you didn't miss, miss much. Um, you did not miss much. Uh, we did Sequench. It's gone. It is actually gone. It's gone. And it was pretty tasty. Now I'm doing the um, American Beauty. Ewart says they say granola because Grateful Dead. Now you could be right on that. They could be saying granola because Grateful Dead. Um, I would hope that's not the case, but it is Dogfish Head, and you could totally be right. Um, yeah, I mean, so is this gimmicky? Is this is this a gimmicky beer? Is this where you know the collab with the Grateful Dead kind of? You hope you hope it inspires some kind of great beer, but at the end of the day, this is just like an American Pale Ale that they're brewing with honey and granola, but maybe not using a ton of it, using uh, basically ingredients that they find will maybe intrigue people, but it doesn't really change the fact that this is just a, a solid, sweeter American Pale Ale. Could be. Uh and then Ewart says, Joe, what is the logo on your hat? This is more Talus Brewing Company, Ewart, in uh, Avon, New York. I visited them this, this past weekend. Been there like three or four times. Really like their beer. Uh, but but um, yeah, they don't they don't get really I mean it's basically they just do crawlers and uh, whatnot. So yeah, they're they're one of the new new hopped or new hyped breweries. Hop breweries, hype breweries. Uh, we have Eric Gilbert shows up. He says, Cheers, fools. What up, Eric? What's up with that Leafs game? What's the score of it right now? Also, Kadri getting suspended equals yes, he should have. And then uh, Rainier Prade says my bottle is two twenty seven nineteen, which is the exact same as mine. So similar batches. He says I opened my bottle last week on the night of the cancel show. This bottle I am drinking now is drinking a bit better. It's a palate thing. Yeah, I can't really speak from that just because, like I said, this is the first time I'm having it. It's 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 a good beer. Like this is there's nothing bad about this at all. Ashley and Nick say it's 2-1 Leafs in the second. All right. Cool. I mean, that's a that's a really hate and hate series for me. Like, I don't care who wins. I just hope they kill each other. Right, Nick? I know you feel the exact same way. Uh, Christoph says, damn, wish I was closer, but I could jump two cat loaders with my car. And then he says, cruise that at 150 kilometers watching some Joe. That is not safe. That is That is not ideal. And then Eric says, Leafs, baby, for fuck's sakes. You know, this, this review isn't ruined by my terrible palate or the fact that I suck at beer tubing, but it's ruined by the fact that we have multiple Leaf fans in my comment section right now. And I know Eric wants to fight everybody, but then Nick also wants to fight everyone. Nick's in the same, Nick, your team missed the playoffs too. So I don't know. Shout out to you, man. We suck. Uh, Ram Parade says the first bottle he had of this, he couldn't see any honey or gr granola, but I can see it on this real good stuff. I'm getting the honey. I'm not getting the granola. Like, I can't tell you there's any kind of granola or oats or in, like actual taste. If anything, there's like a slight softness and smoothness I'm getting that could be associated with the granola. Uh, I'd imagine the granola has a similar effect that oats do where it kind of makes it soft and smooth or just smooths out, makes it a little bit like heftier. Ewart says, I hate the least more than any Leaf fan loves them. Uh, Ewart, are you technically a Red Wings fan? I don't even remember if you even like hockey, even though you're technically a Canadian, I feel like you should. And Eric, no, I'm not jealous at all. I just, I mean, I, I honestly, I hate the Bruins more than the Leafs. I do. I do. And then Christoph says, what? Speed limit is 128, so it's not that bad. 
How many did you settle down, Crystal? And Nick says, F the Bruins, no love for the Leafs either due to annoying fans over the last year, even though the Leafs only finished four points ahead of Montreal. Yeah, well, Nick, I mean, I, I totally get you on the Leafs fans being annoying, but uh, Montreal fans, you know, they can be annoying too. So can Buffalo fans. Like, we all can be annoying. But the fact is, is none of our teams have won diddly poo, as Jim Mora would say, in the last 25 years, right? So what the fuck? All right, uh, rating. As I'm drinking on this, I'm actually enjoying it. I would say, you know what? I, at first, I was kind of disappointed it finished sweeter, but as I continue to dry it or drink it, it's drying out. It's not really bitter, but it's drying out enough where I do enjoy the sweetness with the dryness. It balances out that portion of it, and it just drinks like a really well-made American Palau. Like they have to be using old school classic hops in here. I would, I. Be very curious to know exactly what hops. They, ne they never really post them, do they? Like, I'm looking at their website, and Dogfish Head doesn't say anything about specific hops. They just say uh, all-American hops. Yeah, well, there's a lot of all-American hops at this point, Dogfish Head. So I would guess, like, Cascade, Centennial, uh, Chinook, like the Sea Hops, like Falconer's Flight kind of stuff going on, something like that. But I would give this a solid... 3.75 out of 5. I It's good. It's fine. Nothing wrong with it. I feel like I wanted more based on the fact that there is granola and honey in here. But, you know, to each their own. Jesse says, well, cheers, Joe. I like the sequench. Didn't care much for the beauty. I could see that. I like the sequench more than the beauty, to be honest with you, Jesse. I, I felt the sequench was exactly what they said it was, a session, a session sour ale. I could crush a ton of those. It had a kiss of tartness. Um, you could get the limes. You get the salinity. Perfect, like, beach slash poolside slash barbecue beer. Could easily drink a six-pack of it. I finished the entire thing on camera. Then again, I'm probably going to finish this entire thing on camera as well. I just think with American Beauty, this is more gimmick than actual substance from beer, personally. Um, Ewart says, can't wait for the Hammond River Multi Review. You're going to settle down, Ewart. Christoph says, wow, my son said your hat looks like it says AB for Anheuser, Anheuser Bush. Bite your tongue, boy. I hope not. Is that what it looks like? Man, that's terrible if it does. And the Rainer Parade says, I assume both bottles I had came from the same batch, but this bottle is tasting way better than the first one. Uh, Ashley laughs. Stoneyard says, shit, the keg is empty. It just spit at me. Now into a Founders All Day IPA. Founders All Day IPA is probably one of the best bang for bucks, a uh, bang for buck beers. I mean, it's basically a dollar a, a, a can at this point. And then uh, Jesse says it's like Bass tries to go American. I see what I see what you did there, Jesse. I see. Uh, Ranger Prairie says he likes the sweetness. Yeah, that's what, I think that's a saving grace for this Ranger Prairie. I think this is the saving grace is that if this didn't have that honey sweetness, I think this would just be like an just a well-made American Pale Ale that doesn't really do much for me. The fact that I can taste the honey, it's noticeable, and it and it balances out the dryness is the reason why I like this a little bit more than if it didn't have the honey. Now, if I was drinking this blind, I could not tell you there's granola or honey. I would say there's an added sweetness, but certainly not. Certainly not honey. He said, I corrected him. It's InBev, boy. <laughs> yeah, it is InBev. Um, <sighs> fucking AB and Bev, unbelievable. Sexton says, I can't believe they put flake corn in a pale ale. Jesus Christ, Ashley. Flake corn in a pale ale? How about this, Ashley? I know you're making a joke into, you know, AB and Bev and, and Budweiser and everything, and I, I, I get I get what you're doing. Ask uh, Ewart what one of his favorite double IPAs in Detroit is. And he will say Drippa from Kunin, which is a double rice IPA. Well, Budweiser uses rice. I don't know why I even thought that, but Budweiser uses rice, right? Right? No corn syrup, rice. Yeah, no, this is a very well done beer. I think it's more gimmick than substance, though. I feel like, let me ask you a question, Ram Parade, since you're, um, oh, you're talking, he says, oh, no, I was talking about the all day. That's right. You did confirm because, okay, so anybody here who drinks all day IPA from Founders, I remember, Ashley uh, had a can of it, I believe. It was a can or it was a bottle. I can't remember, Ashley. And they had the ingredients listed because in Canada, 
you know, at LCBO, a lot of times they, they, from imported beers, they'll put the ingredients on and it said it had, was it flaked corn or did it say specifically flaked maize? Did it say flaked corn or flaked maize, Ashley? But apparently all day IPA has flaked corn in it, flaked maize, pretty much the same thing. Nick says, Joe eats flaked corn for breakfast. Nick, you're going to need, you're going to need Peter to write you some better jokes because yours are terrible. Christoph says, yeah, the same honor roll kid who thought Todd's background was a shower curtain. Well, I mean, it's awesome that he's an honor roll kid. Um, does he wear glasses? Of course I'm joking. Of course I'm joking. Uh, and then Ashley says flake corn. So they said they use flake. Isn't flake corn and flake maize pretty much the same thing? Or is there like a small discrepancy between the two? And then Eric Gilbert says Bud uses a little of everything. Yep, and they usually produce a, uh, I was going to say a shitty product, but I don't know. Whatever, drink what you like. Anyway, like I said, 3.75 out of 5 for American Beauty. If you pick this one up based on what they're selling, you know, granola and honey and everything, I don't think you're going to be necessarily 100% disappointed, but I also don't think you're going to drink this beer and be like, holy shit, this is totally a granola, honey, American Pale Ale, because it totally isn't. Totally isn't. Um, Jesse says the same thing. I think Maze is Hispanic. And then, uh, Ashley says no fucking clue. Uh, and then Christoph says, nope, but he is interested in beer. So add a kid. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you should be interested in beer. Beer's a good time. And then, uh, <laughs> Christoph is, Christoph is basically my red beard because he, uh, spelled Maze correctly. Jesse, you did not. And I don't care in the least. I don't care. I'm not red beard. Shout out to red beard, baby. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, this review started, uh, started out pretty slow. I only had three or four uh, people watching, got eight watching. Now, it always happens at the end. You always have more people watching than before, just how it works. I feel like uh, <laughs> Nick says, corn is maize, but maize isn't necessarily corn, according to Google, because fucking, yeah, what's next? Wikipedia? Settle down, Nick. Uh, Eric Gilbert says a Bud's copper lager didn't suck balls like most Bud. Did Eric? Did you have the Jim Beam one? Is that the is that the Jim Beam copper lager? Or is the copper lager different? I, I kind of get them mixed up at this point. Uh, just says spell check. Let it go. <laughs> what can I say? Yeah, Jesse, I don't care either. Just give it your shit, buddy. Uh, Ram Prairie says beer next week, and are you going to have any guests soon? Uh, I will probably have guests at some point. Um, I was thinking about this week, but I don't know. I Yeah, I'm going to do more duo reviews. A lot of times when I do duo and even like trio reviews, usually it's not Monday night. I feel like I keep Monday night for solo. But yeah, at some point I'll bring people on. Um, I already said Rainier Parade. You probably can't get either of these beers unless they're hanging out on your shelves. But next week on my channel is going to be Barrel Age Michigan week. Uh, I have a beer mail from uh, my buddy Jeff, No Jinx, sent me a beer mail like three weeks ago, three and a half weeks ago. And I have a bunch of beers from uh, Griffin Claw and Odd Side Ales that I'm doing. But on Monday, the two beers I'm going to re be reviewing are th the entire week's barrel-aged Michigan beers. And the two beers I'm going to review on Monday are going to be the um, from New Holland, the Dragon Dragon's Milk Reserve Banana Coconut. And I'm also going to be doing Bell's' uh, 30th Anniversary Cherry Stout. Now, both of these beers have been around probably for like six to eight months, maybe even a year. But I have them in my cellar. I want to drink them, especially the banana coconut. I've been trying trying to review it, but I just I just haven't. So I figured I'd do it live. If you still see them on your shelves, you can get them, grab them. If not, cool too, whatever. Uh, but I want to do both of those because they've been sitting here. I need to drink them. And yeah, I figured they would fit the theme of barrel-aged Michigan week. Although I believe, I believe the Bell's 30th anniversary cherry stout uses oak chips. So not 100% barrel-aged. Um, yeah, Eric Gilbert says, yep, Jim Beam. Yeah, I had, I had the copper, the copper lager, the Jim Beam one, and it wasn't terrible. It, it really wasn't. feel like, uh, Nick would like it because, um, uh, you know, he's Nick. Uh, Nick Sell says, still need to do that Thor's hammer. Yeah, we got to get together with you and the West Coast version of yourself. Uh, Ewart says, Ash has Trippa. Wonder what he thinks. Oh, he actually has Trippa from Coonan. You gave him a bottle of it or a can, I guess. Awesome. Yeah, actually, I'd be curious to see what you think because uh, Drippa, 
Tripa is one of those beers that is just unlike most beers that I've had in the past. And it's still, even to this day, just kind of completely different. I know people that have drank it and kind of whatever, um, you know, they just kind of like don't understand. It's a, it's a double IPA, but brewed with, you know, rice. So, uh, Rainer Parade says, I was born in Michigan. Well, that's a little bit more information that I now know about you, Rainer Parade. Do you get New Holland or Bells in your area? I feel like you get Bells in Maine, Rainer Parade, but I don't think you get New Holland. I could be wrong. And then Christoph says, love your live shows, Joe. My son does as well. Well, thank you, Christoph. I appreciate you and your son watching. That's awesome. Um, I try to interact with the people watching. A lot of live shows, people don't read comments or watch comments, but, you know, it's uh, it's how it is. Um, you got you to you keep your eye on the people. Listen, people are going to spend their time watching your content or watching your live stream, and they're going to post comments. Read the fucking comments. That's all I ask. Eric Gilbert says, also watching the OHL playoffs, Oshawa's leading Air, uh, Niagara 3-1 to one Suns. Fuck Niagara. We're gonna, listen, Eric, you can't have this infighting. You're a Canadian. All Canadians like each other. That's, I mean, that's what the stereotype is, so let's just believe that stereotype. All Canadians are great people, and they all love one another, so let's not. No infighting, buddy. And then Ashley says, 3-1 Leafs. It's the cadre effect. Get them off the ice. They're going to be happy. Uh, Christoph says, and Rajay's because he was a game, he was gaming a couple days in a row. Yeah, Rajay's a good dude. He does do the gamings. Uh, wow. So Rainer Perry says he, they just started getting bells in his area in Maine. Uh, he doesn't think they get New Holland, which not a lot of places do. Christoph says he, de he says definitely your hat says AB and Bev or AB and Isaac Bush. It does not, it does not Christoph's son, but I can see what you're saying. Even though I can't see it, I hear you. And then Eric says the same damn game going on. Yeah, well, shouldn't the NHL playoffs trump the OHL playoffs? I feel like that should always happen. And then, uh, you know, Nick says all Canadians get along unless you're into Slipknot and live in Manitoba. Fair enough. I will say this, Nick. If you're interested in throwing up a live chat, I know you were wanting to join. I'll join. If not, that's cool. I know Redbeard's not anywhere to be found, period. But I would join for a little bit. Um Outside of that, probably not. Probably not going to do a live show of mine because then Greg will want to invite. And who's going to invite Greg to his channel? Except for maybe Nick. Anyway, I'm pretty much done with these beers, finishing up the last little bit of this one. I think this is the first live review I, I've done where I drank both on camera, but that's because these are super easy going. Um, Jesse says New Holland, or uh, sorry, New Hampshire. Had New Holland last year, but not this year. It's weird. They already pulled out. Uh, Nick says, yeah, you can do something for a couple hours. So sweet. Uh, Christoph says, Canadians, I'm not your friend, buddy. Well, I'm not your buddy, guy. I'm not your guy, friend. I'm not your friend, buddy. A little South Park reference there. Eric Gilbert says, nah, son. Playoff hockey is a playoff hockey. Sure. But the NHL trumps the OHL. Let's let's be let's be clear. Uh, Jesse says no Covey. Yo, no Covey. I drank that fucking sequench out so quick. I wish I had another one because uh, I totally still wouldn't uh, quench it. And then Christoph says Golden Knights. Yeah, cheer. I, mean, I, I can't believe how good the Golden Knights are. It's insane how quick they are. Uh, you know, successful going to the Cup in their first year, and then this year looking like they're going to beat the shit out of the Sharks. But yeah, anyway, I think I'm going to wrap this up. It's been about 45 minutes. Uh, so thoughts. If you like sour beers and if you're so, I will say this about this um, sequential. If you're somebody who doesn't like sours or can't get into them, they're too tart. They're too sour. They're just not your vibe. Try sequench from Dogfish Al, uh, Dogfish Al, Dogfish Head. I wanted to say sequench Al plus Dogfish Head and I just, I foobarred it. But uh, this is reasonably priced, readily available, anywhere Dogfish Head distributes, you'll find this. And it's not overly tart, very line forward, super easy to drink. Try this one out if you are a big, I want to say if you're trying to get into, into any kind of sour ale, try this out. As far as the American Beauty goes, I would say probably only pick it up if you really like old school American Pale Ales with a nice touch of sweetness. Outside of that, this is a gimmick. Pick it up if you like the Grateful Dead and you want like a souvenir or something. It's in a 12 ounce bottle. Probably can get it for a couple bucks. Try it out. I mean, it's nothing. This is not going to blow your mind. This is not setting the standard in any which way possible. 
It's just a well-made American powwow with a touch of honey, in my opinion. Uh, Ewart makes a good point. He says, Sequench is a great post-workout brew. It does. I, I mean, do they mention the uh, calories? I feel like the calories on this would be something they like go nuts about. They don't, but I ma imagine the calories on this is under 150 calories, I would say. I mean, I'm somebody that's losing weight, and the reason why I'm taking both these both down is they're probably like 350 calories combined, so I'm good. I've allotted my amount of calories today. Uh, other – Nick says, another ca Canadian you can hate. Northern oh, – Jesus Christ. Nick, come on, bro. Uh, Ewer calls me a quitter and says F me because I'm shutting it down, but, of course, then he gets to join, so I don't know how much he's really ha upset about that. Christoph says, all right, Joe and your buddies. Cheers from Vegas. Take it easy, Christoph. Thanks for uh, swinging by. Stoneyard says, man, I drink I drink to sh I drink to slow. I drink to slow. I don't I don't know what that means. Uh, Ewer says, Sequench. Okay, I, already, I already read that. Eric says, cheers, fools, go Leafs, go uh, Generals, and fuck the rest. Sons! And then Christoph says, my son has seven years to go, but he wants to try Ruination. Fucking A. And then uh, everyone else says, cheers. So I will say one last thing here is check out everyone else's channel. We have uh, Chris from Off the Tenth. He showed up earlier and then left. Check out Sexton Brewing, Ashley Sexton. He does a lot of uh, homebrew stuff, but he does some commercial reviews as well. Check out Nick, Maxwell Star Beer Reviews. We're actually going over his channel to hang out. Uh, check out Bumpy Road. Jesse does homebrew stuff. He's been doing a lot of tastings on different uh, New England style, or not New England style, New England beers. He used to do just New Hampshire, but now he's branching out. Uh, and I think that's it. Everybody else does not have a channel, so I can't shout them out. I can't. It's not happening. Anyway, appreciate everybody stopping by for another live beer review. Remember, next week, New Holland, Dragon's Milk Reserve, Banana Coconut, and Bell's 30th, 30th, 30th Anniversary Cherry Stout. I don't know. I'm getting hammered. It's a good time. Anyway, take it easy, everybody. Till the next one. Cheers. <laughs>